guys welcome back to my channel so today I wanted to do a video for you and this is more for my beginners those who are just getting into makeup or like to do makeup but just really don't know how to get into the swing of things or don't know how to accomplish different things so I'm gonna do like a little mini series and this is going to be like how to do things from the beginning and basics and just some tips and tricks for you guys and the tools that I think work best for accomplishing different looks and things like that because I know a lot of people want to learn how to do makeup and they are interested in it. They just don't know how to do it and it's a learning process and it's just something that takes time more than anything. So yeah, I'm just going to share with you guys a basic eye look and this is going to be how I accomplish my eye looks. But this is going to be very easy, something that's going to be easy to attain and it's just going to be broken down for you guys. So you can understand what exactly you need to do when you're at home trying to get a look similar to this or whatever it is. Never fails. Okay, so first and foremost, I'm going to share with you the items that I use to prime my eyelids. So it's very important that when applying any eyeshadow to your eyelids to prime them, because a primer is gonna act as a concrete and just kind of cement the eyeshadow to your eyes and keep it there all day long. If you don't use a primer, I guarantee you the product will crease up and your look will not last. So it's just very important to use any primer of your choice. Me personally, I love the Kat Von D High Voltage Eye Primer. If you watch my videos, you know I use this in every single tutorial. I love it because it gives you a really nice base and it's very pigmented. And for me, since I have a deeper skin tone, it really helps eyeshadows to pop. And I just love the way it applies to the lids. It's just very easy and it makes the product glide on. So this is my favorite primer. And in addition to priming my eyelids, I do like to put a little concealer right below my brow bone. So today I'm going to be using one by Clinique. This is the Clinique Even Better Concealer in the color Suede. I think that concealer is underneath your eyebrow, I should say, rather than underneath your eye because they're a little bit thicker, so they can tend to crease in the fine lines underneath your eyes, whereas underneath your brow bones and your eyebrows, they're really good. and It's not going to have much of a problem because that area is pretty smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to apply the concealer and the brush I'm going to be using to do so is one from Sigma and this is the Sigma Concealer F35. I like this brush because it's great for carving out that area and because I did do my foundation first today, I want to make sure to not get product onto my eyebrows so this brush is going to make it really easy to do that. So as you see, I'm going to dip my brush into the product and then I'm going to apply so I like to start underneath my brow and kind of create a shape and follow my natural brow line. And this is going to work to also highlight your brow, but for me, I like to add the concealer underneath because it just helps to color correct that area because I do have darkness on my lids and it just helps to make everything look so much nicer and I have no discoloration once I apply the concealer. So you can see already the difference between this eye that I applied the concealer to versus this one. There is darkness on my lid still because I haven't primed it, but you can tell that it's just more of an even canvas. So now I'm gonna go in with my Kat Von D High Voltage Eye Primer, and I'm gonna place this all over my lids. And it just a little goes a long way because like I said before, it is extremely pigmented. And the way I like to apply is just with my fingertips and I like to tap it out because if you tug at your lids, it's going to you know, increase the amount of wrinkling on it and nobody wants to get any excess wrinkles than, you know, nature already has in store for us. So I love to tap the product on. Okay, so now I have created a smooth canvas, one that's very even based. And to set this all, I'm going to use a brush as well as a powder. You can use any setting powder of your choice, whether it's a translucent, anything that you use to um, apply to your face, anything that you're comfortable with. Me personally, I love the It Cosmetics. This is the Celebration Foundation in the color rich. I just love it. I think it's a great product and I love it, especially for setting the um, primer and the concealer on my lids. I'm going to pat the powder on and this is just going to ensure that that product does not budge or move or crease. And I think it does help to have the shadow stay on that much longer. 
especially with different types of formulations of eyeshadows. I feel like even with primer, they can crease. But once you set the primer with a powder, I don't have that problem. So, very important step. So now that I have set my eyes with my powder, I'm going to go in with my eyeshadow palette. Now I suggest if you are someone who is just getting into makeup that you definitely look for an eyeshadow palette that best suits you and has colors that you're going to enjoy and that you're going to really use. Me personally, I love the Too Faced. This is the Sweet Peach palette. I feel like this is especially great for people who are medium to tan skin tone. If you are someone who is a little bit more fair, I want to say the Naked 2 palette is really good because it's got a lot of great shades that are neutral and very work, work friendly and something that you can use from day to day. And I also feel like if you are tan or tan to deeper in skin tone that the Naked 1 is really good as well. So me personally, I love the Sweet Peach palette. It's definitely got shades that I think are geared towards me and ones that I really love and enjoy. So that's the palette that I'm gonna be using. I love these palettes because they have a really great balance of shimmers and mattes because to create an eye look, you can do an eye look that's all matte, but it's very difficult and doesn't look so great when you use all shimmers on the lid. So I definitely suggest something that's well balanced and I love the color selection. You have your pop of color over here. This is my favorite transition shade. I love orangey transition shades and it's got your shimmers but it's a very wearable palette and something you can use on the go all the time to travel whatever you have in store for your life pretty much. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place a shade in my crease. This is going to work as our transition shade and it's going to make sure that all the eyeshadows that we apply to our lids kind of marry together well on the lids and that they're not choppy and that they're well blended. So the color that I love is the color in here called Candied Peach and this is more of a like pinky peachy shade and I will show it to you up close. So this is the color Candy Peach. I love this for my transition shade because it just works best for me. And the brush I'm going to be using to apply this in my crease is one from Sigma. This is the Tapered Blending E40. This is my favorite blending brush of all time. I think that it blends product out amazing. It's an affordable brush. I believe it's about $14. You can get this on Amazon. You could order this off of the Sigma website. I love Sigma brushes because for me, they've lasted for a long time. I want to say I've had some of their brushes for like four or five years. So I think the quality is great and they are really durable. So I'm going to dip my E40 into the candy peach color right here. And I'm going to place this into my crease. Now everybody's crease is different. It just depends on the anatomy of your eye. But mine is right here. It's usually in the socket. So when I open my eyes, it's like right here. So I'm going to place the product in that portion of my eyes. And you want to make sure that you use the butt brush and go in windshield wiper motions as you see me doing. This is going to make the product not choppy. It's going to displace it evenly in that area. And it's going to be well blended. So I'm taking that from outer corner to inner corner in that windshield wiper motion. And you could also do circular motions as well. And take as much time as you need or as you have to do it because you want to make sure it's blended out and it's blown out really nicely. And be careful with the product because wherever you first place the product is where you're going to get the most pigmentation of your color. So just be mindful of that. Wherever you place it first on your eyes is where you're going to get the most color. So I typically start with the outer corner and then move the product in and into the inner corner because I don't want my inner corner to be too pigmented. Okay, so now I have placed my transition shade. You could see how it kind of separates your brow bone and it just kind of defines your lid a little bit more. So I would like to personally deepen up the crease a little bit more and I'm gonna go in with the same brush, but now I'm gonna go into the color. It is called Summer Yum and this is just going to further deepen up my crease. This is the color right here, Summer Yum. And using the same brush, I'm going to tap it 
I'm not going to go too deep into the product. I'm just going to tap into the product because it is deeper. And I'm, I'm going to work this into my crease, the same area. But I'm going to try to go a little lower down. And this is going to create a gradient effect. So originally you saw that I put the product all here. Now I'm going to try to place the product a little bit lower and keep it in the socket. And if you would like, I would suggest like dipping into the product as you go if you want more color pigmentation because it's easier to build the product as opposed to take it away. You can start with less and work it into the color you want it to be rather than placing a lot of product and trying to get rid of it, which is very difficult to do. So you can see from here to here that this eye is a little bit deeper in the crease. And that's what I want to do because I want my lid to kind of pop. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deepen up the outer portions of my crease. And I'm going to be using a Sigma E40 brush to do this. It looks like that. It's a goat haired brush with a white tip. I love this brush, especially for working with deeper colors because it applies the product very gently. It doesn't put too much pigment onto the lid, which can be a little bit tricky when working with mattes and darker shades because it's hard to blend it off and make it a little bit more light as opposed to a brush that is synthetic. It applies the product on a lot more pigmented. So I feel like it's a little bit difficult to work with when you apply too much matte product on the lid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the color. So this color right here is what I'm going to be placing in my outer crease. So I'm going to tap into the product like so. And I'm going to apply it to the outer portion of my crease. So first I'm going to tap it into this area. And then I'm going to work the product around. You can see that I'm blending it out and I'm blending it towards my inner corner. And I'm going to go in the same kind of circular motion to blend it out. But I want to keep the dark color underneath the crease where we place our transition shades because I don't want it to be too blown out and too dark. And I feel like when dark colors go above that area, it can look a little overbearing and it can make you kind of have raccoon eyes, so to speak. So I like to keep it in that vicinity right there. So I'm going to dip back into the product really lightly. Like I said, it's so easy to add product and build up your color versus take away. So just go in slowly and just really blend that color out so it's not choppy and you don't have any lines or choppy lines. Just makes it look really easy. And blending really is the key to creating a really nice eye look. If you take the time to blend out the shadows and make them flow on your lid, your eye look is going to come out so seamless and it's going to look absolutely stunning. So that's the color on that side. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. And when you dip your eyeshadow brush into the color, if you want to get rid of any excess, you can just tap it off on the top of your palette and you'll see some of that excess product fly away. Okay, so now you can see that I have deepened my outer portion of my eyelids using that matte shade. And you, it really is going to make your eyes pop and it's really going to add that really beautiful smokiness to the look. And you can see I've pretty much left the inner one third of my lids blank because I'm going to place a different shadow in this portion of my eyes. And that's going to really make them pop because I usually use a shimmer on the inner portion of my eyes because it really just brightens up the eyes and it brings that really beautiful glam look to any smoky eye that you're going to do. And you can see on my eyes right now the gradient. You can see the beautiful transition shade. It is like an orangey, peachy shade and it goes into that deeper shade and then you can see the outer portion. It is that deep matte shade that I use to smoke out the outer, outer portion of my lids. So now going into the inner one third of my lids, I'm going to apply this color right here. It's called Luscious and this is just a really beautiful champagne kind of topaz shade right here. Okay, so I'm going in with this color right here, Luscious. 
and that's going to be the color that I place on the inner one third of my lid. So to apply that shadow, I'm going to use a brush by MAC. This is the MAC 242. I love this brush because it really helps me to get into like hard to reach areas and it helps to define that area. So I love this brush because it's just a really great multi-purpose brush. You can also use this for, you know, applying concealer underneath your eyebrows. I think it's a great tool and it's a great brush and I've had this for a very long time and it's very durable. So I'm gonna dip into the color Luscious and I'm gonna place this on the inner one third of my lid but only on the lid, I'm not gonna go into the crease. I'm gonna keep that shade underneath the crease. And I'm gonna bring it so it meets that dark chocolate color that we place on the inner on the outer one third of our lid and I'm going to pat the product on so it's pigmented when you tend to swipe applying this I feel like a lot of the eyeshadow can fall down and go onto the bottom portions of your eyelid so I like to pat the product on and if you want to define that area you can use the swishing motions so now as you can see this eye looks a little choppy and it can be a little messy so what you're going to do to blend those two shades together is you're going to go back in with your sigma this is the e25 brush and i'm going to with no additional product just kind of blend that area in circular motions and just marry the colors together and kind of get rid of that harsh line that i created when applying the shimmery shade. And this is just blending the shade out and just making that line and that transition into the deeper shade a little bit more seamless so you don't have that choppy line. And you can see now it's gone. So this is basically how I do my eye look. I'm just going to leave it as that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to apply winged liner. Now this is very difficult and it does take lots of time and lots of practice so do not get discouraged if you don't get it right away. It took me forever and my wings were always lopsided or they never looked really good. So just practice, practice, practice and find a tool that works best for you. Everybody's different when it comes to wing liner. What may work for me may not work for you. So just you know, play around with different products and see what you like best. So the winged liner pen I personally love is one from Lorac. This is the liquid eyeliner in the Frontline Pro. This is just in normal black. And this is my favorite because it's got these nice bristles that create that really sharp wing and they last the longest for me as opposed to a felt which I feel like frays away and it goes bad very quickly. I feel like there's tons of product left but the precision it just isn't there and I don't want to use a brush that's like super frayed and not going to give me a really nice winged crisp line. I'm very particular about that. So I love this brush because you can see it's just very pointed. It gives you really great definition and it's easy to work with. So when I am starting my winged liner, I follow the direction of my eye, which is going to be, you want it to go like up and across. So I start here in the corner and I go up here. So you're going to go kind of in the direction of your eye to the outer portion of your eyebrow, if that makes sense. So I'm going to show you how I do it. It's a little bit difficult to talk and do wing liner. So I'm just going to do, do it and have you guys watch me. And I create the line. And that's going to be the outer flick of our liner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line to the top of it and go directly across my eye. And you can see I stopped right there, right mid eye, right here. So from there, I'm going to go to the inner portion. When you do winged liner, you want to make sure that the inner portion of your eye is going to be a very thin line because it can look very thick. And I don't love it when there's a thick line on the inner portion of my eyes. I feel like it takes away from the eyeshadow. So I'm going to start with a very thin line very close to my lash line and kind of slowly meet it to the end of that line I created right there. 
So you see, I was talking and I kind of went like this. So you guys will see that line there. But you'll see I kind of made an outline. And where that outline is, I'm just going to fill it in with the pen. Okay, and that's my wing. I know I made it look so easy, but you want to make sure that you, when you, like I said before, when you do that line, you want to take it straight across. So it gives you a really nice effect. You don't want it to look too bubbly. You don't want it to look too flat. Sometimes it can look very flat and look like a table top, and then sometimes it can look too bubbly. It just doesn't look right. So I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to let you guys observe. I'm going to try to do it slowly so you guys can see. But like I said before, it just takes lots and lots of practice, okay? Okay, so that's it for my winged liner. Very easy looking. I know when I do it, it may get look so easy. But like I say, just sit in front of your mirror and just practice, 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 practice. It, like I said, it took me forever to get it down. Just try to keep your wings even. I don't like a huge wing liner, so I always stop like right there. I take it out like maybe a centimeter. So now I'm gonna go in with my favorite mascara at the moment. And this is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. And I'm just going to coat my eyelashes with this mascara. This is just pretty simple. I mean, I don't really have to teach anybody how to apply mascara. You just start from the base of your lashes and wiggle the brush outwards. And that will give you the most product and the best application for coating all of your eyelashes. Okay, so you can either choose to leave your eyes like this. Some people like to have a very bare waterline. I know pe me personally, when I go to work, I love to leave the bottom waterline kind of bare because you don't really need to have a smoky eye at work, not me, at least. Like if I have time, maybe I'll do it, but nine times out of 10, it's bare. And that is the end of my eye look. But if you want to smoke this look out even more, what you can do is you can go back in with your eyeshadow palette and go back in with that color Summer Yum, which is what we use in our crease. It is that red brown shade. And I'm gonna go in with what you call a definer brush. It's flat like this. And this one is from Sigma. This is the E15. And with that flat brush, I'm going to dip it into that product. And I'm gonna get it really close to my And you can choose to stop right there at the middle of your lash line, or you can choose to bring it all the way in just depending on preference. If you stop midway, it's going to make your eyes more open. Okay, so I don't wanna leave this look like this. So what I'm going to do to smoke it out a little bit more is I'm gonna go in with a pencil brush. This one is from Sigma, it is the E30. I'm gonna blend this eyeshadow out with the color Puree here, which is just a really beautiful milk chocolate shade. And I'm going to place this on my pencil brush, tap off the excess, and I'm going to run it underneath my bottom lash line. And this is going to smoke out that color and kind of create that gradient effect underneath there and it's going to drag the product down a little bit lower and smoke it out. And you're blending those two shades together. Okay, so now to finish up this look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a black liner in my waterline. You can use black, brown, whatever color you like. I like black nine times out of 10, and I'm using the NARS Via Veneto. So I'm gonna show you a trick if you're someone who has a hard time getting into the waterline without, you know, moving it, 
you can take any brush. I'm going to use the large fluff. When I press on my eyelids like this, it's going to make the waterline pop without pulling or tugging at it. And then it gives you really easy access to that area. So you can see the difference between adding shadow and product to your waterline versus leaving it bare. I feel like the bare is a little bit softer whereas adding the shadow and the liner just makes it that much up the amp and more, more smoky. So now last but least what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my brow bone and I'm going to highlight my inner tear duct. And to do so I'm going to be using MAC. 299 brush so it's a goat haired brush it looks like that I'm going to go in with the color nectar if you're a little bit more fair white peach would be great but the nectar shade works really great for me I'm going to tap it into the product lightly tap off the excess and I'm going to apply it right underneath my brow bone in this area right here but very lightly can see here versus here how it just added a little bit of oomph and it kind of lifted that area now that I've highlighted the underneath of my brow bones I'm going to move on to the inner portion of my tear ducts and the brush that I'm going to use to apply the product there any brush that you like I personally like this Zoeva this is the 223 brush and I like it because it's kind of like a dome shaped so it's easy for applying the product right in that area. So I dip it into the product, I'm going to dab it in there and just do a little slight circular motion in there. And that's going to help brighten up the inner tear duct and make you look more alive and more awake. You can see the difference from this eye to this eye. I feel like this eye just looks so much more bright and so much more alive as opposed to this eye. You can see the real difference. So this will end my tutorial on this eye look and how you can achieve a very simple smoky eye look at home for those of you who are just starting. I hope you found this video beneficial and I will be doing more so just stay tuned. I will help you guys out step by step along the way to figuring out makeup. Bye guys.